Danica Bunnett with Blue On Energy. Today we're going to be talking about charging and tuning. I have Jed Kennedy here, uh, who is the Director of Technical Services, and um, he's going to be giving some resources, tips, and tricks about charging and tuning. So, Jed, to start off, would you explain a little bit about what you do with Blue On and what your day-to-day -day looks like? Sure. Uh, so, as you said, I'm the Director of Technical Services. Um, Blue On's different than other manufacturers in the fact that we have our own in-house technicians. Uh, they go out in the field and they do installation with contractors. Uh, real, real live, hands-on training experience in the field. Um, they also provide live technical support. So if contractors have issues in the field, they can call us and they get a real live technician on the phone to help them uh, through any issues they might have. Wow, that's incredible. Cool. Um, so let's talk about a bit why charging and tuning is so important um, with TDX20 and blends. Sure. So blends are different. They all operate at different pressures and temperatures than mm -hmm. R22. Uh, and so with that being said, it's very important to, to tune blends into a, a system when they're charging. Um, R22, the manufacturers did all the lead work. They gave you a name plate charge and said, just put this amount of refrigerant in mm -hmm. the system. Well, blends are going to end up at a different charge depending on their own pressures and densities. Mm -hmm. um, so it's why tuning is really critical when, when uh, replacing R22. Got it. So how is charging with TDX20 different than charging with R22? What does that process look like? So with TDX20 and really blends in general, um, there's a few things that are very important and keep in mind. Um, always charge a blend as a liquid. Mm -hmm. um, we start at 80% of thing plate or whatever was recovered, whichever is less. Um, the general idea is, you know, it's better to start low and work your way up to that optimal charge than to overshoot it and have to pull refrigerant out. Right, that makes um, sense. So yeah, start at 80%, charge liquid only, um, and then depending on the metering device, if it's a fixed orifice, you charge to superheat, uh, whatever the manufacturer recommends, but generally, you know, 8 to 20 depending mm -hmm. on the system. Um, if it's an adjustable metering device, you charge to subcool, uh, get a good column of liquid, and then dial the adjustable metering device into uh, an appropriate superheat. Uh, right. Typically for us, we run at the lower pressure, so that's typically one to four turns closed on a TXV. Okay, so you have to adjust based off of the type of valve you have um, for tuning for TDX20. Yes, that's correct. Okay, um, and so what are the recommended superheats and subcools of TDX20? So we always say, um, you know, just to reiterate, always refer to OEM guidelines, mm -hmm. but, you know, generally um, across the board, uh, 8 to 12 subcool is appropriate, um, 8 to 20 superheat at the coil is, is appropriate, and, and about 12 to 20 at the, at the compressor inlet is, is all pretty appropriate values. But again, always refer to manufacturer recommendations. Cool. Um, so what are some of the target temperatures and how do they reply to a place replacement? So when dialing in a system, uh, you know, 90% of the game is getting your appropriate super heat subcool numbers, mm -hmm. but it's also important to keep in mind, you know, your coil temperatures, okay. uh, both, both your evaporator coil and your condenser coil. Uh, those need to be at appropriate temperatures in order to transfer uh, the heat that's needed, in order to cool the space. Um, but the, the intent there is to make sure that you're maintaining those cold, good cold temperatures. So okay. a pretty standard value is 40 degrees for an evaporator. Mm -hmm. Um, so even though you're, you're charging with a, a replacement, you still want to try to maintain that same evaporator temperature. Okay. So what are some of the problems you might run into if you don't properly dial in or tune your system? So, you know, one, one good example is you could, uh, if you went to a nameplate charge with a, a blend like TDX20, mm -hmm. you could overcharge the system and that can put your compressor at risk. Okay. Uh, you could be running inappropriate superheat numbers and risk sending liquid back to the compressor. Um, so that's not good. You can also undercharge the system and then you're going to lose capacity in, in that. And then even if you overcharge and, and not uh, risk the equipment, you can still lose a lot of efficiency by having too much refrigerant charge. Okay. Very cool. So it's really important to charge and tune then with all blends, but especially TDX20 then. Yeah, I would say any, any blend in general, make sure you're charging and tuning it in properly. So Jed, any additional tips or tricks you might want to add um, about charging and tuning? Sure. Uh, so, you know, R22 was designed for these, for these systems. Uh, so with R22 going away, it's just very important to, you know, do the right thing. Uh, dial the system in as much as you possibly can in order to protect the equipment and uh, get the most energy efficiency for your customer. You know, charging a beer can cold is just not appropriate anymore. Blends are different and, you know, you're used to working with R22, it's going to take some time mm -hmm. and, and, you know, working with different blends and finding out, you know, what works best for you uh, in order to get to a point where you're, you're comfortable using refrigerant blends. Got it. Cool. Thank you. Yeah.